All right, so for winterizing the outside, first thing you want to do is you want to pull this plug right here. I don't have one of the little nano rods or whatever the heck they're called. Get all your hot water out of it. Water period. We'll let that drain. Uh, I've unhooked my water and it's right here. And the way I do mine, I don't run antifreeze, but I blow my lines out. So you go get this little doodad right here. You can buy it at an RV place. And it has like a, what, uh, a tire valve on it. So you take a compressor and you hook up to this and you uh, you set it at about 35 pounds. You don't want to put no more than 35 pounds on it for your lines. You don't bypass your uh, uh, hot water heater because you're using your hot water heater as a tank. So the plug I pulled out to drain it, I'm going to put back in it. And what that'll do is it'll, it'll hold air in it. And then as I'm pumping the air through my lines, and it builds the air into the, you know, builds pressure. I go to the farthest point, which would be my bathroom, and I start opening the lines up. Uh, and it blows all the water out. It's kind of a slow, it's not as fast as uh, as normally doing it if you run the antifreeze through it, but you're guaranteed not to have no water in your lines. Uh, make sure my gas is shut off, because I had it on last night because we ran the furnace for a little bit. And when I get back, we will start the dumping process and get this thing winterized. Okay, now I've already dumped all my tanks. I have three. I have my, my gray, my black, and you can see it up under there is my uh, uh, sink, my uh, galley. I run this, it's called dual flush. You run a garden hose in it, and you turn this on, and it shoots high pressure water back up into the black tank. I also will run several gallons of just clean water through it and get it good and flushed out before I close everything up. I just sit there, let this run for a while. Uh, I think it cleans it a lot better. Then I'll open everything back up and let everything good and drain, make sure there's no water and nothing. And, uh, well, I got to blow the lines out. I'm getting ahead of myself. I got to blow the lines out. I'll leave them all open while I blow the lines out and let all the water drain out of it. So, as that's doing, doing that, I have my compressor hooked up over here. Just a small compressor. Like I said, you wanna make sure you you have your uh, pressures. Uh, 40 is all right, but I set it at 35. You don't wanna put no more pressure in that through the lines, air pressure. And then I have uh, this valve, or this valve, and you, just, you put it on here. And it builds your air up, puts uh, air in your, you know, five or six gallon tank, whatever you got. And then once you get a lot of air built up, you can go and start opening your lines and just blow everything out. So I'll be right back. Okay, so not that I need to show you this, but you see here, hold the valve on. The pressure over here running has 35 pounds of air can put in it and you just stand here and fill your lines up it does take a while but you get all the water out of your rv that's important so i'll be right back okay so i'm in the bathroom i have some pressure build up you see sorry for the camera i've got the end off this okay so i'm gonna lay it down now the lines are full of air now watch the water come out let's hope you can see it all the air being is pushing all this water out and i'm gonna get a bath thing. now that's just air blowing Look how much water is in these lines i haven't i'm not nothing's hooked up it's just being pushed through Get crazy or what? Okay, come up front here. This is the kitchen.
This is the hot. I'll get here in a minute. Look how much water's in these lines. I'll do this several times back and forth, fill the lines up with uh, air, and then coming back in here and doing this until I get nothing but air out of them. No little sprinkles of water or nothing. Uh, and then I'll take antifreeze and I'll pour on all my drains. And I mean, then it's pretty much done at that point. I will be right back. All right, now I've done this oh, three or four times, but if you can see, she get in here. There's still water coming out, but there's a lot of air. But when I put my hand in front of this thing and not get it wet, all my water's out of the lines of everything. Like I said, it takes several times. But as far as I'm concerned, it is well, well worth it. The hot water heater holds a lot of air so once you fill everything up it takes a while to get the air back out of the line I'm about out right now a couple more times and we'll have it done though okay uh i've blowed the lines out it took me about six trips run back and forth but i got to where there was absolutely no water coming through i had my all three of my valves i have one one holding tank for just the galley, which is the kitchen. Then I have one for the uh, shower and the sink in the bathroom. And then I have a black, of course. So I got three. So I'm let, sitting here letting make sure all the water gets out of them after blowing the lines out. Once that's done, I'll close all the valves up and I'll pour uh, antifreeze down all of them, RV antifreeze down all of them, the drains, and uh, that'll be good. Then we'll push this slide in and cover up the, we run tarps all the way around the deck. And we put our grill and all the furniture up there that stays outside, put it up there and it helps protect it. Uh, in a couple weeks, I'll come back and I'll put a, I got a 10 mil cover, 20 by 30, I'll put over the top of this. I used to have an RV cover and I uh, put it in my son's shed and the mice destroyed it. Thing looked like Swiss cheese when we pulled it out. So uh, I'll get a 10 mil tarp and we'll put it on top of it. I hate to leave it, especially up here at the snow and as hard as it freezes helps protect it uh if you do put a cover or anything tarp of any kind over make sure it's dry make sure all the leaves the nuts anything's off of it uh before you put it up you don't want to trap that moisture in there so ah uh, that's it when we get it all done i'll do a quick walk around and show you what all we've done and hopefully it helps you out so just a real short you want to drain your water heater but you don't want to bypass it uh once all the water's out put the plug back in and then you want to get a compressor and don't put out if you, if you have your rv at home you can use your 500 gallon air compressor just make sure it's down to 35 pounds you know you always have a uh uh when you hook your water up to city you have a, a reducer it puts it down won't let no more than 40 psi go through your lines anyway so you could probably do 40 i do 35 to be safe and it, it's plenty it's plenty to push the water through so you push all the water through Make sure there's nothing. You'll get a couple drops here and there, but make sure there's no water left in them. Seal everything back up. Let your drain, your uh, tanks all drain out. Close them up, put antifreeze in it, and you should be good. So we'll get this thing closed up the rest of the way, and we'll get back with you. Okay, real short. Something I do is, I think I already showed you, but I take my shower head off. I make sure it's drained. Put it in an angle that everything will run out. Uh, I wrap the hose around. I've blown out all my lines. I've put antifreeze down all the drains. But what I do is I leave antifreeze in the toilet. And what that does is the seal that is right here that uh, keeps that closed where nothing runs out through it and no smell can come back up, it keeps that moist. So I do that and then when I come back in the spring, pop it open and all is wet. All right, so here it is all closed up. Ready for old man winter. We wrap tarps all the way around it. These are strips of nail down and the way we can store stuff. Like I said, I leave mine plugged in for the old critter getter in there. Slides in, those are put up. 
Shades are shut. Propane shut off. 2015 camping season has come to an end. Sad, sad day. Say bye, Willie. Say bye bye, Willie. That's my buddy's camper over there. We'll come back and get the golf cart and everything, but there it is. 2015 done. Hope it helps. Thanks a lot. All right, on our way home. Me and the Willmeister. Ah, uh, there you have it. That's how we winterize it. Uh, hopefully, I'll give you guys some good ideas. I just can't stress enough. If you're gonna blow your lines out, make sure you don't go over 35 pounds. Turn your compressor down. The biggest compressor is small. I use a small one, but still, it'll, it'll go to 100 pounds. And I've I've seen guys blow their lines out and not turn the compressor off, and it sounds like tires blow when their lines are popping off. It can happen. So, uh, just be careful doing that. Use your uh, hot water heater and use it basically as a tank, uh, air tank, and it works out great. So, been a great season. Uh, got some more things coming through the winter. Keep this channel up and running. So, thanks for watching. Any questions, leave it in the comments. I'll get back with you. Like it. Follow me. And we'll see you later. And, oh, yeah. The NRA banquet. I didn't win a gun. But, there's eight guys at our table. So, two guns, one Yeti cooler. It was a 38 bodyguard. And it was a uh, 450 Bushmaster rifle and a small, about $300 Yeti cooler. So, uh, eight guys, three wins, not bad for the table. But it was a, it was great. It's the Friends of the NRA. They do a lot for the kids. 4-H, uh, kids shooting all over. Uh, if you ever, ever have a chance to go to one, go to one. It's a ton, a ton of fun. It's not a political thing. There's no political speakers. There's none of that. It's just raising money and everybody having a good time. They feed you. Uh, the one I was at had a bar, it wasn't an open bar. You go up and buy drinks, but it wasn't expensive by no means. So if you ever get a chance to do it, do it. See ya.